This is from Susie Renee. Great for all stages of gardening. These ladies are full of wit and wisdom. I love that this podcast has something for new and seasoned gardeners. You can't help but laugh along as you learn something every week. Thank you, Susie Renee. Thank you, and welcome to the Garden Angelus, where we talk about flowers, veggies, and all the best dirt. I'm Carol Michael from Indianapolis, Indiana, where I have a suburban garden measured in square feet. And I'm Dean Ash from Guthrie, Oklahoma, where I garden on several acres out in the country. Too many. We call ourselves Garden Angelus because we are evangelists for gardening. We love gardening, and we want you to love it, too. Yes, we do, and we aren't afraid to spill the beans and tell all of our gardening secrets, the good, the bad, and even the ugly. But that's enough of who, what, when, where. Let's move on to this week's episode. Carol, it's raining in Oklahoma this morning, again. So this is Monday morning, and it is a beautiful sunny day in Indianapolis. Well, in Oklahoma, it is 57 degrees, and it's supposed to be 80 what in the heck? Well, I got to now, I got to look up and see what my temperature is. I've been outside sowing seeds and stuff, and I know it's not terribly warm because I'm wearing long sleeves. It's 61 degrees, heading to 76. A little on the chilly side, yeah. but not horrible. I don't think we're supposed to get above 65 today. I don't, oh, anyway, I want to hear about your garden. I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> About mine. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to tell you that before this podcast, I did finish planting the vegetables from seed in the garden. I still have to sow zinnias and marigolds. They'll be done by the end of the day, but I've got uh, three kinds of beans, four different squashes, two kinds of cucumber, corn, okra, broom corn, and nasturtiums, two kinds of nasturtium, all planted out in the garden this morning. So I want to ask you a question about your marigolds. Do you sow all of your marigolds direct sow outside, or do you start some inside? I sow everything direct sow outside when it comes to marigolds and zinnias. Yeah, I don't start zinnias inside either. I start them direct sow outside. Although, I was given some plants by the AAS, which I I think they're perfusion bicolor. And so those came as plants, zinnias. But my marigolds, I start them indoors. Do you want to know why? Rabbits eat them? I don't think rabbits eat them. No, I don't know why. Because they have a really hard time in Oklahoma with spider mites. Oh. And if I direct sow them, yeah, the spider mites overwhelm them. Um, And so this way, although this year we wouldn't have very many spider mites because it's too damp and too cold. But in a normal year, we have problems with spider mites. And even though you can direct sow them, Sometimes they get overwhelmed by the spider mites when, if there are plants and I set them outside, I can spray them off with water a lot and keep them real damp, and then the spider mites go away. So that's why I don't. Interesting, eh? It is. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to sow my sunflowers in little pots on the patio until they sprout because I've had trouble with them sprouting in the garden, which is weird Hmm. because there are chipmunks gathering sunflower seed from the bird feeder and planting it in all the planters and every bit of those sunflowers is coming up so <laughs> i don't know i don't know so any anything else going on there oh yeah i uh i dug up a bunch of perennials and took them to my older sister yesterday she's replanting her front she's tore out a whole bunch of stuff a huge big overgrown arborvitae so we kind of got stuff placed for her and then i took uh a smart pot with three tomato seedlings, cherry tomato seedlings, to my sister in the condo and got her all set up. We sowed some basil. And um, I got kind of smart, but not very. I planted the smart pot here. I already had one full of dirt that I wasn't going to use. So I just planted the tomatoes here, loaded them on the truck, took them over there. And then when I got there, I watered them in and gave them a little bit of fertilizer. So they should do really well. I'm sure they will. Mine that are in smart pots are doing great. I tied them all up. My younger sister, uh, youngest sister, she, I texted back and forth with her, got her all squared away on pruning her lilacs. Had a cousin email me wanting an ID on some, a perennial they had, and they were arguing, the, they were arguing with each other. My cousin is, and her husband. Anyway. So I'm just like the answer lady. But most importantly, I picked strawberries like three big times and a bunch of snow peas too. So good eats out of the garden. Good eats. Yep. 
<laughs> I picked snow peas too. So don't take hey, us. It's funny because I thought. Go ahead. I was going to say, don't take us too down with your next little update. Yeah. Okay, so four inches of rain fell in my garden in one and a half hours, and it washed out all of my paths and a lot of my mulch, but I worked really hard yesterday and the day before and got the mulch back. Now the paths, I'm going to need help. So I was going to say, so let's get break this down. So if four inches fell in one and a half hours, that means two yes. inches fell in 75 minutes. So an inch right. fell approximately every, yeah, that's not very good. That's a lot of rain. That's really fast. I mean, you know, Laura Wills from Texas was visiting with her husband because they were on their way back home to Texas. And uh, they drove through all those storms. And they were the biggest storms we've had in a while. And she, when she got here, she said, I love your water feature. And it was the water racing over my steps in my front yard. So I was like, yeah, thanks, Laura. <laughs> it was pretty funny. And so we could look at the garden until afterwards. And I thought, well, I'm a good sport because my garden looked like a drowned rat. But it's okay. Um, it's just the way it goes. I, I don't even want to talk about Oklahoma weather right now. It's really bad. But the garden itself, the plants look really good. And I worked really hard this weekend. And so I'm going to get some help on the paths get those shoveled back up the hill, and the bees are doing okay. I added two more nukes. Did I tell that last week? Yes, you did tell us that week. I don't I did? Okay. So they're settling in, and I will check them as soon as I get decent enough weather. And then my tomatoes are doing great. I picked snow peas. I planted green beans. I still need to plant cucumbers. I am not planting corn like you are, because that's just saying, hey, raccoons, come and eat my garden. Um what else have I planted? Okra. I planted okra. Candle fire. Have you ever grown candle fire? I have not, but it sounds pretty. I'm just growing the old Clemson spineless. It's one of the best ones out there. So, should we go on to our quote? We should. What is the good of your stars and trees, your sunrise and the wind, if they do not enter into our daily lives? E.M. Forster. I found that one. That's a good one. I like it. So that is a good one. This week we're talking about mini plants and not M-A-N-Y-M-I-N-I. -I. Yes. Little tiny plants. <laughs> little tiny plants. And um, the first one we're going to talk about is one that was sent to me this spring from Star Roses and Plants, and it's the Petite Knockout Rose. So they sent it to us, and it only grows 18 inches tall. By 18 inches wide. It's That's a tiny rose. It's a pretty doggone cute little rose. And I put I potted it all up in my Talavera pots, three that are identical, and I set them against the potage because I just thought it was pretty. And I will post pictures to our Instagram of them. They will be up before this airs on Wednesday. And they're just tiny. And so I didn't know it, but it's also the 20th anniversary of the original Knockout Roses introduction. And so a lot of changes have happened since then. Um, just to the whole rose industry, partly because of that rose. And the biggest change is disease resistance. And, right, you know, you can buy really good disease resistant roses from many different companies now. And it used to be people just sprayed the heck out of them, but you don't have to spray roses anymore. And then the other thing is they are they are still working on roses that have resistance to rose rosette disease, which isn't technically a disease, it's a virus. And um, I thought I was at the Garden Calm convention where we first saw the knockout rose, but that can, that's not possible. My first GWA, which is Garden Calm now, was 2007. So they had a punch, and it was called Knockout Punch. Right at the deal. You uh -huh. wanted this one. Anyway, it was just really kind of a clever idea. And I think they must have been introducing maybe the double knockout rows, you know? Um, that could be. I, the petite knockout rows, I think, has double blooms. And um, it's a pretty little thing. And then it now, is. now it only that, comes in red, though. It only comes in red. We should tell right. people. Only petite, comes in red. Petite knockout comes in that really bright cherry red. And... This time, with the rose, they sent me ingredients for a knockout martini, and I didn't drink it, actually. I didn't have time to make it. I was too busy gardening. So I gave it to my daughter, and she made it, and she took a picture of it. So I'm going to put all that on her story, and on my story, probably 
today, which is Monday. And then I was going to say also that I've seen the roses and their extremely expansive display at Lowe's. So if anybody wants a teeny tiny little red rose, there you have it. So I have two things to say. First of all, I looked it up because I was not familiar with this because I haven't been to Lowe's in several weeks. Um, and it has an official name. It's Mi Beno. Mi Ben Beno. It's, so the breeder gave it some weird name. But for us, it's Petite Knockout. And the other thing about it, D, if someone hands you a drink and it's got the word knockout in it, do you yeah. think it's a good idea to drink it? <laughs> I don't. I think that everybody thought it was a good joke anyway. So the reason I think it's May Benbino is the MEI is for Milan Roses, who is the Uh breeder, the hybridizer. Right. And then maybe Benbino means small. So it could um, be. I don't know. That's my guess. That's its actual botanical name. But everybody else knows it as a petite knockout. So that's my story on the knockouts. That is pretty good. That is a very tiny rose for a rose. And um, if you want red roses, I'd say go for it. Now, I, I don't have very many red flowers around here except a few geraniums. But I, I would be sorely tempted by that. Well, I what saw. I thought was interesting about it is it's a really tiny plant, but the blooms are regular size. That is cute. They're not, you know how usually on miniature roses, they have little tiny flowers. Uh These are not little tiny flowers. I mean, they might be smaller than a regular rose flower, but they're not miniature size. So it's kind of a fun deal and it looks really good in my Talavera pottery. Very nice. So we will put a link to Star Roses and Plants and you can head to your local Lowe's, it sounds like, and check out a display of those. So that's our mini flower. Now for a quote. We have a quote. You are also far less likely to waste food when you have nurtured it from a seed into a plant. Darina Allen. Isn't that the truth? That is the truth. Oh, my gosh. My little tomato seedlings are tiny. They're getting a big dose of fertilizer today and a stern command to (laughs) not embarrass me any longer and start growing. But, Dee, I forgot to tell you something. What's that? So I planted all my tomatoes out on Saturday. It's probably as late as I ever did. I woke up yesterday morning on Sunday. There was frost on our rooftops. It was about 40 degrees. And I took a picture because I'm thinking, well, nobody else in their right mind was up that early, I suppose. But I looked out there and it's like, that is frost on the roofs. That's crazy. That's like it being 57 degrees at the end of May. On May 31st in Oklahoma. That's nuts. Anyway, but I have the sweetest little tomato plant that I got sent by the folks at Pan America Seeds. And it's a Kitchen Mini, which is a new line of tomatoes and peppers they have. And mine is called Royal Velvet Tomato. And this Mm -hmm. thing is only going to get, I don't even know if it's going to get a foot tall, D. I mean, it's tiny. Well, I have a question. I can't wait until you get a few. I don't think you can answer it yet. But once you get some tomatoes off of that little plant, I want to know how many tomatoes that little guy produces. Yeah, I'm, I clicked on the picture to look at it, and they're showing a tomato that's got a lot of tomatoes, or a plant that's got a lot of tomatoes. Right. And it is literally, I don't even know if it's a foot tall. But the thing they said about these minis is, you can leave them in the four-inch pot. You don't have to up-pot them into a bigger container. Huh. And you can just pop it into a decorative pot and just leave it. And so it's sort of a, I don't want to, it's it's not intended, I think, to sit there and last all summer long. No. But it's intended to produce a few tomatoes and be sort of a conversation piece. And if you have a little apartment or just like a little patio table, plunk a few of these on there. Right now, also, it looks like they only have the tomato and some peppers. Well, they have more to, more than one tomato, too. Um, so you have red velvet. I'm looking at their list, their PDF yes. deal. And they have uh, edible potted tomato cocoa. And then they have tomato siam and micro tom. Those are the tomatoes. And then they have quite a few peppers because peppers start to produce really early on plants. So I can see how this would be very successful with peppers. And what a fun thing to be in your kitchen. And it's sort of like when we're in the garden and we go and we eat cherry tomatoes because these aren't big tomatoes. These are cherry tomatoes. 
you know, I mean, I eat cherry tomatoes and strawberries as I walk around my garden. Don't you? Yes. Of course I do. Okay. So you could do the same thing in your kitchen. Yes. You could eat them as you cook, right? Yes. And so what I would be curious about, and I, I do not know how well it would do inside, like with, under artificial lights, but I know it'll just do great in the summertime outside. So I got that from Pan America Seeds, and I'm giving it a whirl. And I attended a Zoom where they, yeah. they talked about it. And this is kind of, they are, they are on to this trend of people having smaller spaces, but wanting to grow tiny bits of food and just the joy of it, I guess. So, Yeah, because you aren't going to produce a huge harvest. So the idea is that, first of all, they're decorative because they're cute. Right. And, you know, you can set them in a window or you can put them outside. Well, here in Oklahoma, you could not leave that little tomato in a four-inch pot outside. But you could do it in your kitchen. And you could do it under lights if you wanted to. But I think it's just about joy, about just enjoying the process of gardening. Right. No matter how small. And I, the other thing, I also got a, uh, I grew from seed a couple of micro Italian basils, which stay tiny. Those sound fun. Have you grown those before? I grew one that somebody had turned into a topiary one year after I went to California Spring Trials. And that was, that was a lot of fun. I just, I don't like to do topiary, but topiary basil is kind of fun because you get the pleasure of the smell as you're stimping it into a little shape. Right. And I, I gave two to my one sister and then I'm growing the two on myself. I'm just going to put them in a little pot and just kind of snip on them. Cause you know, we like to do that as gardeners. Snip, snip, snip. We do. Snip, snip, snip. It's a lot of fun. We're going to link to kitchen minis and they, I think you can probably find them at uh, some of the Lowe's or Home Depot possibly. If not, ask for them. They're the they're labeled kitchen minis, so you can't miss them. And it looks to me like the red velvet tomato and the cocoa tomato are supposed to come out in 2022. But right now they have the tomato siam and the micro tom and a bunch of the peppers. Oh, okay. Out, so Ooh, I'm a year ahead. That's what it says. No, yeah, because they often do that because they want us to talk about them a year ahead. But anyway. Kitchen minis, the next big trend. We're on it, D. We're trendsetters. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So you want to do the next quote? I do. Here's the quote. There are no happier folks than plant lovers and none more generous than those who garden. Ernest Wilson. So on our bookshelf this week, a friend of ours wrote this book about microfood, and it's called Microfood Gardening, Project Plans and Plants for Growing Fruits and Veggies in Tiny Spaces. It's by Jen McGinnis, and she's a friend of ours, and she and I became good friends partly because of our love of monarch butterflies, and we're excited about her urban gardening book, which follows this trend that we've been talking about in this episode. Yes, she has so many cute ideas in this micro food gardening book about how you can grow various food plants in tiny spaces, tiny containers, using tiny varieties. The breeders are all over themselves breeding plants that grow well, small plants that produce nice vegetables and fruits and things. In fact, that reminds me of potopino peppers. Oh, yeah, potopino, right? Because jalapeno, isn't that what it is? Yes, and it uh, grows well in a hanging basket, and so Pan America also sent one of those. And then I had grown some from seed because uh, All American Seed Selection sent us the seeds for potopino, and I planted a three, uh, four, so that's four in a hanging basket. I was just going to see how it does. Yeah, I think that sounds fun. Um, I know that Proven Winners also has some of these very, very small um, vegetables, and they are tomatoes and peppers too, if I remember right. I'm waiting for somebody to create a micro eggplant. That would be fun. Wow. Um, what I liked about Jen's book is that plants are considered micro if they top out at 18 inches, like the rose we talked about earlier, or the basil, or the tomatoes. Um, and then I like how she broke down her potting soil and gave definitions of vermiculite and perlite, because you never really see that in books. Um, she has a little box section on it. And then section two of the book is 30 projects 
involving many food gardens. And I especially liked the window box food project because you can grow flowers in window boxes, but you can also grow food. And I think there's been this real trend that it started way, way back with Rosalind Creasy, but I think it's just increased over time with people who are growing food either instead of flowers or with flowers. And you don't have to necessarily have a project that just involves ornamental gardening. You can also eat what you grow. Very nice. And I'm looking up in the book because you said you'd be welcome a dwarf eggplant. And there must be one because she talks about dwarf eggplant. I don't see the variety listed. Oh, Little Prince. There you go. Little Prince is a dwarf eggplant. Who knew? Who I missed knew? that. So, and a lot of the times these little dwarfs, we should remind people that they may be dwarf, but they also produce dwarfy fruit. So they may not produce a full-size tomato on a little tiny tomato plant, for example. Right. So most of the time it's a cherry tomato or a, one of those little heart-shaped tomatoes. Right. And that she mentioned, and I, I'm going to look up, there's a, there's a, I think it's a pumpkin and I don't know the exact variety, but there's a pumpkin that, um, no, it's a dwarf watermelon. The vines don't grow longer than your leg. I like. Ooh, I want. Well, that, that would be good. Yeah, you should do that. In fact, I'm wondering. I have some watermelon seed that got sent to me as a trial, and I need to go back and look at it because I sort of tossed it aside and thought, no, I don't want to grow a watermelon vine all over the place. And maybe it's a shorter one. I got to go back and look. Now, <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. So my sister, you know, that planted her front landscape all over again. So the one bed is pretty big and she's waiting for a service berry on the corner to grow in. So she decided that this summer she's going to plant, um, I think she's planting a pumpkin vine in there just to fill up the space. Yeah, that's cool. And her grad kids will like it. Yeah, they will. It'll be really fun. So, so the name of the book again is micro food gardening. Project Plans and Plants for Growing Fruits and Veggies in Tiny Spaces by Jen McGinnis. Yes. And we recommend it. Be great for somebody that's just moved to a condo, a small apartment, just doesn't have a lot of space. Or even if, you know, you're the kind of person that just like overwhelmed by your great big space, D, you can have your whole deck set up with miniature vegetables. Let the rest of it go to, you know, where in a handbasket. <laughs> <laughs> no, I cannot do that. <laughs> I've invested far too much of my life in this garden. And when I leave this garden, it'll go to, you know, wear in a hand basket. But for right now, I'm its caretaker. So I do want to depart just for a moment. We seem to have a little extra time. I wanted to tell you about a new pest in my oldest sister's garden that you may have in your garden as well. Okay. So I was looking at her one flower bed and there were a couple of lilies that had been knocked over. And I said, what happened? And she said, small children who don't look where they're walking and just charge into the flower bed. (laughs) And I thought, oh, my gosh, I must warn Dee. (laughs) She has those around her garden. (laughs) I have one. So far, she's pretty easy to direct. But when there become more of them, it's going to be harder, I think. But no, she just wants to eat all the rocks out of my paths. That's what she wants to do. So my sister has three of them running around. And so... The one is kind of a, I would call him the helper. He loves to plan and be right there. And so the middle child, that's the one that tends to just wander around, she says, just looking at all the flowers and not really paying attention to where she walks. And then (laughs) the smallest one is just running after the other one. So it's, you got to watch that. That's a problem for some people. Well, when Megan has more children, that might be an issue. Right now, they're pretty... I mean, so far she's pretty good. Anyway, she I just does want- like to tear all the. She likes to tear the flowers off my pots, the plants in my pots on the deck. She thinks it's hysterical. Uh, to to pull the flowers off. <laughs> yes, she thinks it's funny. Have I not told no. you that story? She sits there and walks around. She's just the height of all of the. Um, containers and she'll go over and I have petunias in some of these pots and so she'll go over and she'll pretend like she's going to pull it off and if I don't stop her she does pull it off if I stop her she laughs hysterically she thinks that's really funny (laughs) 
Sometimes she tells me off. That's why I hope you have some snapdragons for her. I don't. Not not right now. Although I, this would have been a good year to grow snapdragons because it's been so cold. But maybe this fall. My snapdragons, they look really good. And I have snapdragon seedlings coming up around the edge of the garden beds. And I'm just leaving them. Good for you. So, shall we talk about our dirt and do the next quote? Let's go. Here's the quote. Despite the gardener's best intentions, nature will improvise. Michael P. Garofalo. That's the truth, isn't it? Did I say that right? I think so. Oh, my gosh. Nature's improvising in a lot of my garden beds, (laughs) deciding that these weeds look pretty darn good. And I feel like, oh, maybe my soil's not so good. But them weeds, they're growing gang. Oh, everything here is just growing like a weed, including the weeds. So you brought up this one, and I am thoroughly charmed with this dirt. I'm looking at it right now. Okay. I want it. I want all of them. So I I knew that my nephew's wife made these little miniature paper houseplants one weekend because my sister sent me a text with them. They look almost real, mm-hmm. and I thought, wow, those are interesting. But they're made out of paper, and they're they're literally miniature paper houseplants. And so I found out she set up an Etsy shop, G's Louise Design, and she has the cutest little miniature oh, paper cute. houseplants. And then, and my, as my nephew said, and some being propagated, too, so that it looks like it's in a little container that's got, looks like it has water in it, and there's a little thing trying to root. Yes. Oh, my God. Are you looking yes, at them, Dee? Yes, so cute. I'm looking at them right now. They're adorable. So there's, um, they have, and I like, here's one of the things I love about them, is on her houseplants, she actually gives their botanical names. Oh, yeah. Very specifically. Like, she talks about, um, <laughs> let me see if I can find one. Oh, well, this is an easy one. Monstera Deliciosa. And it's like this little tiny monstera, and it's in a little tiny pot. And it's hard to believe it's just paper, but it's tiny because you see it next to that globe. It's so cute. Oh, my gosh. And then she has a Pilea peperomoides, which is money plant. Yes. And the funny thing, I saw them briefly yesterday, and they had been to the plant store. And they were saying what they had bought with the botanical names. And I'm like, I don't know the botanical names of all these houseplants. And their cat had cho- chewed off the leaves of something. I'll tell you. Um, and my nephew, who never gave a wit about plants until he married his his wife, was giving me the botanical name. I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. It was their st- <laughs> because you don't pay attention for house. No, plants, it was right? their Stromanthi triostar. Oh, that's an expensive plant to eat. Yes, actually, my sister. There's a. Had- there's a. Oh, she put a pinstriped calathea in a little pink pot. Anyway, I'm thoroughly charmed. Yes. They're they're And they're, they're all made out of paper. I mean, she's very talented. She is very talented because she has the plants um like this pothos. It's like in a tall paper pot and it's hanging down over the edges. Oh my gosh, we're going to link to her stuff. I hope people go buy it. Yes, and I love, you know, they're, they're not inexpensive to get some of these, but I think they take her hours and hours of work to create each one. And she's got this Yeah, pink, that would. She's got a pink peony um, in a tiny, tiny little glass thing. That's her favorite uh, flower is the peony. Is she the one that you grew the peonies for? Uh, I did not. For the wedding? I did not grow them for her, but I did take her some peonies that had been my dad's, yes. And they're growing in their garden, and they're doing yeah. really well. And so, um, but they went on a little mini vacation down to Kentucky or something. And so when they came mm-hmm. back, the peonies had all bloomed, and then there's some wind and rain, and all the petals had dropped, so she missed them. Oh, well, it happens to all of us. The peony season is beautiful yet short, sort of like the iris season. They both are. Exactly. So let's do our garden commissions really fast. We'll link to that Etsy shop. Um, go ahead, Dee. What are you going to do in your garden? <laughs> I'm going to get the paths fixed. Um, I lose who does mowing for us. So Bill doesn't have to spend his entire weekend mowing all the time. Um, he's, he told me he's going to bring my, his crew and fix, help me fix them. But they were coming today. And as you know, it's raining. So needless to say, they didn't come. 
And then also, I'm, I see, one of the reasons I was so sad about it, Oklahoma Gardening was coming out to video my garden, which is a huge honor. It's our PBS show. So anyway, I'm going to try to reschedule that for a couple of weeks from now. Keep your fingers crossed for me. And then other than that, I'm just going to be like deadheading daylilies and, um, you know, pulling up weeds. What are you going to do? Well, I'm obviously going to be pulling up weeds. I'll be pulling up weeds till the cows come home. I got a bunch of pot, pots or uh, I bought a bunch of can, pots to plant up some you got Wait, 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 wait. You bought a bunch of pot? That doesn't sound like I you. bought a bunch of pots. To grow, cons- oh, put some succulents in, and I have some little shelf thing I'm going to put them on in the back and then bring them inside in the winter. Got to wait for all my seeds to sprout. I did want to tell folks if they're interested in self-publishing a book, I am doing a webinar for GardenCom this Thursday, June the 3rd. So if you're listening to this after June the 3rd, you might be able to buy the recording. So I'll put a link in the show notes in case someone's interested in that. It sounds good. I wish I could come. I've got... I'm gone. I'm out of town. So dang it. That's okay. We want to thank everyone for listening to The Garden Angelist. If you like our podcast, please tell your friends about us. Also hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. And if you listen to Apple Podcasts, we'd love a five-star review. We might even feature you in our intro on this podcast. That helps us get noticed by others. Could you also share our podcast with your gardening friends? Word of mouth is still the best way to get the word out there. Yes, and be sure and check out our show notes for links for more information about today's topics, plus links to our own websites. And if you want to help support us, use the affiliate links. If you buy something after clicking through them, especially books, we earn a small commission and it costs you nothing. It was lovely to chat with all of you over the Garden Gate today. Bye until next week.